Hey everybody, it is Rolly and I am here with Chuck and I'm just gonna try and see if I can get the two of us in a little closer. So normally, two things normally happen is one, I normally interview women and two, I normally do it where we're both on two different cameras today. Chuck and I are together in the same room, so it's actually really cool. And so welcome to Monday Whispers Chat and today we're gonna be talking about um, healing insights. And so um, this is uh, it, this is my friend Chuck Forgette, and he is a um, he's a healer. And I'll actually let him just since he's in the room, I'll let him describe um, <laughs> give an introduction as to who he is. Yeah, I've worked at spiritual healing for about thirty years now. I've studied with Sun Bear. I, I was a member of the Edgar Casey Foundation for seven years. I've, you know, I've I've had the opportunity to spend time with a lot of good healers, uh, a lot of interesting people, and I've taken a little bit of all, everybody and kind of combined it into a mixture that helps me work and do what I do and helps me share an avenue for you to find healing in your own way. So Chuck is new to our area, newer to our area. I guess he's been around for a little bit, um, but he's... Um, been doing more and more teachings and healing in our area so really excited that he's um that he's here joining us today in this conversation um so he's now moved up into the Engelhart area which is about 45 minutes from where we are today so thanks chuck for driving down yeah. here and uh and joining us today so so tell me a little bit about what are some of the things that you do I do most of my work is that it is as a spiritual healer, hands-on spiritual healing. Uh, it's a, a connection to the spirit side of life, and use that energy in working with other people. And it's it's very it's uninvasive, and it's very the people that sit, each and every one of them has a whole different experience. Uh, of what they re get out of it. So it's really hard to say, well, when you sit, you're gonna feel this, you're gonna feel that. It's not like that. It's what you bring, the energy you bring, the spirit people you bring, all of that goes into what happens. So those healings are individual. They happen to every individual in a different way. And some of them are really uh, create a lot of dynamic energy in the person when they leave. So you have to sit and make sure that they're able to get up and walk away. So sometimes uh, the energy gets to be pretty strong and those people have, have a hard time getting to their seat, you know, in a good way. It's in a good way, but there's a lot of changes happen. And, and, and real healing in that way, for me personally, it's, it's just, the best thing that I can do for another human. And that's how I approach it. I teach classes in it. I've taught Introduction to Hands-On Healing up here. And it's about introducing people to that energy form, to that style of healing, and allow them to go out and uh, feel comfortable with themselves and maybe want to pursue it and work in that avenue. And um, and I'm kind of chuckling because we've got Luna is here with us as well. So Luna is uh, is Chuck's friend, and she is uh, she was a little bit disappointed when she finally realized that nobody was going to play with her. And <laughs> as Chuck was talking, she just went. <sighs> yeah. So I'm not sure if you guys could hear that, but it was actually kind of funny. So, yeah. um, so we're going to welcome you, Luna. <laughs> Thank you, sleepy girl. <laughs> so, um, so tell me a little bit about uh, a little bit more about some of the things that you're talking about in terms of healing insights. Like, what kind of? Because you said you teach people how to be able to like tap into some of the things, and you're able to teach them. So, what are some of the things that you teach them specifically? Well, first off, one of the things that one of the it all starts with a with a meditation. If you can meditate a little bit. And you when and when I in my groups we do no more than eight or ten minute meditation, and and I ask people to always place something of gratitude in their heart. I always found that when we meditate, our minds really start to wander because they don't like to be quieted. They always want to be active. So when we're in that meditative state. If our brain is starting to go off on a different tangent, we just say thank you and bring it back to that place of gratitude in our heart. And, and what I find is over time, we do this all the time, is that 
that gap from our noisy brain gets wider and wider and wider. And all of a sudden, one day you're meditating and you say 10 or 15 minutes went by and nothing's happened. And that's, that's the tr true magic. Once you get to that spot and can, can find your way there, it helps increase your ability to tap into the spirit side of life. It helps you make that connection to the divine with, without all that other noise in your brain. So it makes things a lot easier. And when you start using that energy to help others, not only are you helping them, it comes back to you in mysterious ways also. So healing, once you make that decision to go down that path, it helps create healing for yourself first, because that's where it starts. We have to make ourselves in a good place and then we can go out and help other people. And some of the people that you deal with, um, do they all come to you to be able to heal other people or like how does that like? Is no, they don't always come to work as healers. Sometimes they just there's a curiosity what's really going on here. But it's a good place to start to help you understand the spirit side of life, uh, your divine, your connection with the divine. It's a very easy way. It takes all the mystery out of it, all the magic out of it, and to help you find a real easy path to help yourself. Because the real joy and the real magic to all of this is how much healing you can create within yourselves. Because we carry a lot of stuff with us we don't want to deal with, and we've buried it a long ways deep. So we need to try to find a way in our own healing a walk and how we can get uh, deal with that and how and it it's like un peeling an onion one level at a time we just keep peeling it off and peeling it off and when eventually we get to a spot where we're really a much better human and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to be able to walk on the earth mother in a very sacred way and become a much better human and um and our paths are all different and our paths are it's challenging sometimes people will say well why do why does this happen to me why am mm -hmm. i having to experience this why does life have to be so tough and sometimes it's just simply that having that um that connection of being able to trust that there is some experiences that we're supposed to be learning that we're supposed to be having um some um a way of being able to heal that part and heal our, ourselves with it. So when people come to you and say, well, like my life has been crap, like how do I, how do I work through this, this um, walk on this path to be able to be healing? How can I connect with that spirituality or that, that, um, that divine guidance? Well, the, you, you have to acknowledge that all things happening to our, in our lives, are there as a gift to us to help us get to where we want to be. So when those things happen, we just say, thank you, creator. What is this about? And how is this going to help me get to my next, my next step on my journey? Because it's all of these things that happen are there for a reason or just not don't, they don't happen just to create pain in our lives. They're there to help us learn lessons. Our bodies, the molecules in our bodies, all the cells are perfect in every way. They all operate perfectly in every way. They don't need any guidance. They don't need any, you know, medicine or anything else to do all of this. They can do it on their own if we just get out of the way and stop carrying all this stuff. And one of the things that I find, and, and, and this is from my own personal life of, of things that have happened and how, I, how long it took me to deal with it is that when there are troubles around you, please do not pick them up and take ownership of them because we're the only ones that have a choice of what we're gonna do or how we're gonna handle it. And it's, it's really important for us to start to take responsibility for our actions and how we go about doing things. And a lot of that stuff isn't ours, but as soon as we go there, to try to make something better that's not ours to do, and we pick up that trouble, it becomes ours. And so we don't want to take ownership of that. We only want to take ownership of the really good things in our life. And, you know, it's about setting our table every day so that will come our way. 
And I love that expression. So the first time that uh, that Chuck was talking about that expression was, and I'm sure that he's used that same saying a number of years, but we were talking about like the different things and we were actually a bunch of women that were in the circle. And so, and Chuck was saying that, well, there was a, a different time that when I had another um, that I was experiencing with other women and there was a whole bunch of women around and they were talking about all these woes and all these difficulties that they were having with their partners. And he said, as soon as you pick it up, it's yours. And it's like, it all belongs to you. And I just thought that that was, and that has stuck with me from the first time that I have met Chuck. So, <laughs> and so I love it when he actually brings that up because it's something that is true. Like if it's not yours, don't pick it up. It's yeah, not yours it. to deal with. And so, and we, um, most of us want to be able to make somebody else's life better or wants to make things easier for someone else. And sometimes it's not ours. Um, sometimes it is, it is something that we actually have to help deal with, whatever it is that is going on. But when it becomes um, too heavy, then it's not ours. And so, um, but once, once you've picked it up, then it is yours. And I thought that that's actually really, um, yes. I love that saying. So, yeah. Um, so the uh, so now tell me a little bit more about some of the things that um, in terms of those healing insights. What are some of the insights that people already have that they're not aware of? Well, they call it intuition, or my gut tells me, or I got a, I got a feeling about this, or you know I got a picture in my mind about this. This is all divine intervention in your life. And pay attention to it. I encourage. People, and Rolly's heard me say this, is how important journaling, journaling is in our life. Mm -hmm. To journal all those things, to, because we say, oh, we'll remember, but they just go right through our brain. They're there for a second. If we have a pen and paper and we journal that, it'll stay with us. And, and, and I encourage everybody to do that. It, I think that if you, journal, if you t take the practice of journaling every day before you're wide awake, for 30 seconds, it'll help set your day. It's about how do, how do we sit, go about setting our day? How do we make our day better that all these good things come to us? And I always say, how do you set your table? It, uh, Sunbury used to always say, pray on it. If you have an issue, pray on it. So how do we go about that? So it's a, the prayer that you say every day is from your heart to the divine, from that divine connection. It, it's not a prayer that you've learned in school or learned somewhere else. Praying at that level is from your soul and spirit to the divine. So make something, write it down and use it every single day. And it, you'll start to see, you'll become more aware of all those divine intervention in your life you become more aware of it because you set your table every day for that to happen mm -hmm. and it's really important to go down that path I, and i encourage it starting with journaling i think it's the best thing you can do one of the very very best things the other thing i encourage people uh rolly's heard this <laughs> numerous times I, I i challenge everybody for 30 days always to when you get up in the morning and you've set your table and as you're doing the last thing you do before you go out the door, you look in the mirror at that person staring back, say something really nice to that person, compliment that person, do it for 30 days and watch the magic in your life unfold. And it really is. It really is magical. And so Anya is actually saying, I love that. It's not yours. Um, if it's not yours, don't pick it up. So exactly. Anya really loves that, right? So, but it is so important for us to be able to have that, find that that piece of gratitude for us to be able to connect. And so when I was struggling with, um, over the years I've, I've struggled with anxiety and depression for pretty much all of my life. And so, but when I had my huge breakdown in terms of anxiety, or I mean of depression, that was one of the things is that gratitude of being able to find what are some of those things that, and it made a difference. And I did it for more than 30 days because I needed to do it more <laughs> than 30 days. And I do still do it. And, but it's not as conscious as when it was, when I was, when I was not well. And so when I was not well is every single morning is being able to put it out there as to what is something that I was actually grateful for that allows me to be able to, um, to be able to connect and to be able to connect with myself. Hey Sue. And so it's just that, um, 
that piece, that really important piece that we sometimes forget. And yet it's the most simple thing that we can be doing, but yet it's the most healing and most beneficial thing. And yet yes. that is something that we, that's the, one of the very first things to go when we, um, when life gets busy, when things just kind of get in the way, we stop looking after ourselves and, um, and forgetting to be able to tap into those insights. So, um, so journaling, being able to give that, that, um, that gratitude um, to yourself. What are some of the other things? Well, one of, the, one of the things is when you start doing all of these things and you'll start to see the changes as you go along uh, with yourself, healing starts inward. So we were talking earlier about it is that people always want the next guru, the next shaman, the next teacher to make them better. It's not those people's job. And it really does an, ex an incredible job of what she does in this is gives you the tools to help you find yourself in you because that's where it starts. It's, it's in us, we just need to find it. And that's a tough job. That's probably one of the toughest jobs you're gonna have on this planet. And that's why a lot of stuff happens to help us look inward. Because once we finish looking out there at everything and we're no further ahead, we have to turn that gaze inside mm -hmm. in the silence and start to look inside and start to go through our all the things that we've collected and say, that doesn't do me any good anymore. That doesn't do me any good anymore. And we have to re reprogram our mind to, to bring all of these good things to us every single day. And it magic happens. It really, really does. My life is, will tell you that good things happen. And those magical things are not necessarily something that like this whole, and sometimes that happens, mm -hmm. like there's a huge miracle thing that happens, but sometimes those little magical moments are those very small moments. And so are those very small things that when you actually kind of take a look back and cause that's what one of that expression comes from of, um, it's the little things, right? So it's the little things in life that makes relationships stronger, but it's those little things in life that makes your relationship stronger. And so before we were coming on, and that was one of the things that I had said um, to Chuck is that in my circles, in any of my teachings, in any of my one-to-ones, it's always take what you need and leave the rest. Yes. And so whether that's with me, whether that's with Chuck, whether that is with whoever, it doesn't matter. They don't have the exact um, template that is going to work for you. You have to take a little bit from all these different people that are crossing your path and be able to make it so that it's your own. And mm -hmm. so that's really important. So Angela says, it is only in the silence that we hear what we don't what we don't often hear the bird singing its song the child saying mama dada the voice of god so thanks angela yes um and sue says love the small moments in life and yes. so and it is it's really those um and especially and, and you can find a lot of those small moments during your most difficult times yes and when you actually look for those things during your most trying times then that's when you're able to pick things up. So I know that we've had um, some family that have struggled with the loss of, um, of a child. And that was one of the things that the one of the grandmothers had said is that this particular situation is, it was a horrible situation in terms of losing a child, but it was all the greatest moments were like when you got to see um, siblings that were actually really connecting with each other, um, parent and child that were actually connecting with each other, um, partners that were connecting with each other. And it was all those little moments that within that time where everybody was having the most difficult time, they were able to find those very cherished moments that were able to help them stay connected with each other and within that moment. And when you talk to them about some of the memories, it was all those little moments. It was all those little times that was actually... Um, that strong connection. The event itself was a horrible event. It was something that most, uh, that no one, like I can't even say most, no one ever wants to have to experience, but yet they were able to take those little tiny moments in that time frame to be able to find those little miracles, find those little um, boosts of things that were actually happening that make things good. So um, what are some of your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, and I'll share a little bit of, about my life story. Uh, between uh, the ages of 16 and 25, 
I lost 25 friends and, uh, and a brother along the way. Uh, and through a lot of different ways you could possibly go from suicides to murders to accidents. It just, it was, it was, it was unbelievable time. But through that whole time, I was able to gather my thoughts and help me. It, and all of those events helped create the healer that I became because those were the things I, I realized I didn't have control over any of that. I only had control over my reaction and action to it. Uh, did it make it any easier at the time? No, I tell people when you're in that experience, when you've lost somebody, it's the same every single time. It doesn't get easier because you do it numerous times. It's the same. And really just lost a pet. It's exactly the same feeling. When you lose one of them, it's the same. It doesn't, it doesn't change. It doesn't change because they're not human. It's that feeling of unconditional love is the same to that pet as it is to your loved ones, your, your two-legged friends. It's just the way it is. It, and that love that we can harness from that, those events, we can take that inside of us and turn it into something incredibly beautiful. And that's what, as people pass on, once they get to a place where, if, especially if they've been sick for a long time and they're knowing they're going to go and there's a lot of things going on, they'll get to a place where it's okay. Uh, the book, Tuesdays is Mori is a classic example. If you've never read that book, I encourage you to read it. It's an incredible book on, on the march towards death. And people are afraid to talk about it, but we're all going to be there one day. So we can't be afraid of that happening. You know, it's just, it's a, it's what our life is. We're all going to, from the moment we're here, that's where we're headed to. And so we can't be afraid of it. We have to embrace that aspect, embrace the spirit side, embrace all of those things to help our path, help us walk in a more sacred way on the earth, mother. It's about how we walk, how we work with people. How we, we, we all suffer from the human condition. We all get angry. We have all those moments. You know, that's okay. We just take center ourselves when those things are going on, bring us back to that piece of gratitude, say thank you, and move forward in a better way. And that's how we try to get down the, our, our path through our life. It's a hard thing. It's not easy, but life wasn't meant to be easy. You know, we, we look at people and we say, I wish I was like that guy had millions of dollars and how happy he is. If you really, there wouldn't be so many drugs in that culture if they were all happy. They're missing something, so they're doing something to find out what they're missing. So we need to figure out in our own lives personally what gives us incredible gratitude, where our, our love comes from for ourselves and how we can take that and light the path of others. The real joy and love of healing is you have a hundred opportunities a day to do it, do the best job you can and become the, I always tell them, the best energizer bunny, Sh shine your light in all those dark places because those people need it. And you don't have to say anything to them. If they see you doing good enough times, then they'll eventually follow that path. You agree, don't you, Luna? Luna decided to get up at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so she apparently liked what it is that he was saying. And so, like, and it is, it's really important for us to be able to do that little bit of good, right? So um, you hear the um, paying it forward, people going <laughs> into Tim Hortons and paying it forward. There's, and that is one way of being able to pay it forward, but so, giving somebody a smile, mm -hmm. right? So you see somebody on the street, give them a smile. It's contagious. And I have... Um, very seldom have I ever given somebody a smile on the street where they don't reciprocate that smile. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see it. And it's not just a, um, it's like, oh, that person's smiling at me, right? So it's just that little, and that might have been the one thing that they actually needed today. Yeah. And so it's just that little bit. And sometimes when someone sees me and gives me a smile, that is something that I need today. And so it's um, it's just really important for us to be able to, and again, doing that with a fine, um, following a fine line of like not picking up somebody else's 
thing, but being able to give them that little bit of gratitude, giving that little bit of um, positive energy going their way gives them, helps things go a long way as well. So because it's huge. And um, so what are some of the other things that you think might be important for people to, to know? To, well, I think the, the real uh, hard part of all of this for ourselves is it's completely foreign to what we're taught. We're taught we have to be really mindful of our time. We, that's why we have day timers. We have to worry about how much money we're going to make, the prestige of making money. That all goes away. When you become really comfortable on your own skin and really comfortable with the healing path you're on, th those things don't mean, mean as much to you anymore because the love that comes your way from doing the work that Roly does all the time. It's incredible to watch transformation in people. And that comes to you at the same time. As much as they're changing, it helps you change. It helps you understand that the path that you're on as quietly as you're doing, going about doing your job with it. It's incredible to, to watch that people, other people have the aha moment. And really, there's a joy in them having it but the joy comes back to you also. So it's important to really pay attention to all of those little things going on around us so we can graft all the good moments and then bring them to us so we can share those with others. It's really important to be the best human you can be in whatever way that may be. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have, are blessed with lots of money and you can pay it forward all the time, then do that helps you then mm -hmm. by all means i always share a story i spent most of my life on the road and uh i was i can't even remember it's in the midwest somewhere and i was in a restaurant and i've been doing this for years and years and years picking random people out and uh paying for their meal and leaving and not letting them know who it was i always thought that was pretty funny <laughs> But <laughs> I, I, I was sitting there one day and there's an elderly woman came in with her daughter and they were just, sometimes people are dripping up with money and the, these two were, and it was kind of funny. So I called the waiter over and I said, those two ladies you're working with over there, just give me their bill when they ordered. And uh, so I paid it and left. And I, to this day, that still makes me laugh because I could just see those two saying, who thought they needed to buy our meal? <laughs> you know, which is, it's, it's just a little chuckle thing for me. It's always made me smile, but it, it's, that's one way of doing it. It's one way of creating wellness in your life is being able to do that, paying for an extra coffee. There's a, a, so many things we can do. There's so many ways that we can help people. And I, it, it's checkout lane, especially in Walmarts today where there's, hardly any cashiers working. People are angry all the time. When it's your turn to get there, I encourage you to leave that person at the till with a smile on her face and laughing. It's the best thing you can do for them all day because you may be the only person that'll do that for them. And that's paying it forward. And it's so, and it, and it doesn't have to cost anything. Doesn't like have said, to spend right? money. So, yeah. like we, being able to smile. Hi, Irene. Um, I got uh, I got your message, but I got started on here, so I will give you a call when I'm done. And um, and glad that you can actually join us on live. Um, but it's just really important for us to be able to um, find those little things that make us better, and find the little things that um, that make us happy. But also, it spills over to other people. And so it's not always easy because like you said, we have angry, we get angry, we get frustrated. There's a whole bunch, bunch of different things that go on and happen. And so we have to try and find and rejig whatever it is that we were actually planning on doing or how it was in our intentions of how we were able to do things. But giving us that opportunity to be able to find a way of making it work and, um, and being creative. Right. So finding a creative way of making things happen and um, getting us to be able to still do those different things and um, how it works for one person isn't always going to be the same way that it's going to work for us. And I know that I've said that already even today. And but it's just something that I think that bears repeating because 
a lot of times we think we have to do everything the way that Chuck said, or we have to do everything mm -hmm. the way that Irene said, or everything the way that uh, Dominic said, and it might not work for us. Mm -hmm. And so being able to find different ways of being able to make it so that it is comfortable for us. And not to say that when, because I also work with people who really do need to make some changes and sometimes you have to go into that uncomfortable place to be able to make those changes and you really don't want to go there and you really do need to take that next step. So it's not that part of um, being uncomfortable. It's that um, of only doing things that are comfortable. It's being able to push yourself a little bit further and but knowing where your limit is and just because you have a number of things that you actually have to deal with in your past doesn't mean, or even in your present, doesn't mean that you have to push yourself beyond um, the limit. It's always take you as far as you need to go. And for this moment, being able to stay sitting in it. And that's one of the things that I tell my clients often is that, because um, they'll say, oh, well, I didn't do my homework. Well, it's not affecting me. It has nothing to do with me because I give my clients homework most of the time. Um, because it is that next step. What is that ne next thing that you need to be doing? And if you don't do it, then it takes you either stay stuck where you are or there's some reason why you're not able to move through that and being able to connect with those insights. And so we're talking about healing insights, but being able to connect with that intuition, being able to connect with like, what is it about that particular thing that somebody's asking you to do that you can't do and why can't you what is it that's that you need to be able to do to be able to do to take it to that next step and take it to that next level? Um, because it's not necessarily what someone else tells you they have to do. Um, because you also have to go with what does your gut tell you? And that's huge. And for a long time, I didn't listen to that gut. I didn't listen to that instinct. I was the one who followed all the rules. I did all the I did all the extra work, school work that the teachers would give me. I would do. I would be that that person who was always trying to make sure that everybody else was happy and doing all those things. And when I came to realize that, it's like, no, I need to do what it is that works for me. And some of that stuff does work for me. And some of that thing, those things are things that I need to do. But being able to let go of some of those things and listening to that insight. So now when I actually listen to my instincts, it's huge. It's huge when I actually say, I'll be talking to somebody and I'll be like, mm, yeah, that's not sitting well with you. And they're like, well, how do you know? I didn't say anything and it's not necessarily their body language either. It's um, sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not even that body language. It's like that I get that, that intuitive hit that says, Oh, we need to take a look at something a little bit more. What is it that's going on? And I've had clients that have said, well, I've never told anybody. I, how did you know? Right. So, um, and it's just because I've been able to learn to listen to my intuition. And so, um, and that's, Part of the insights. That, That's part of the um, insights. Part of the insights also is not everybody has a feeling in their gut. You know, the kinesthetic people, it's always a feeling. I have a feel for this. I have a feel for that. Other people, they see it in color. Other people hear voice, not don't hear somebody chatting, but they, it, it's in their head. That's where they get their information from. Everybody interprets it differently. It's okay. Not everybody's going to be a feeling person. A lot of people are auditory. And that's so that's you have to find out how it works for you. And that's where NLP, if you read a little bit about NLP, it'll help you understand how you digest information because everybody does it differently. You know, some people are very kinesthetic. Everything's on a feeling mode. And they'll t when they talk to you, they will tell you exactly how they interpret information. Well, you know what? I got a feel for that too. Well, okay. So, you know, they're kinesthetic. Yeah. Well, you know, I see, I can see this over here. I can see, you know, I can see how that's going to, they're going to, they're telling you how, so when you need to talk to that person, you need to explain it in that way. So they grasp that, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into all this and how we all interpret information, how we all get it. For me, I'm, I'm like Rolly, it's always a feeling. I get a feel for this or I get a feel for that. You know, we're, we're probably closer to our four-legged friends than we care to believe <laughs> because they're very good at that. <laughs> and if we pay attention to them, it'll really help us. <laughs> just, you know, it's just the way it is. So it's funny how it is, how it goes. So it's really important to really pay attention in our own lives what sets us off. People with cigarettes that smoke, I always say, just before you light that cigarette, 
what was the feeling or the thought or the reaction you had before you picked it up and, and lit it? Because there's a trigger there. We need to figure what that trigger was. And once we figure that out, then we can start to unwind the rest of it. And that trigger is this for a lot of different things that happen in our lives. So once we understand that instant, just before we went to that angry spot or went to that other spot, we need to rewind it to find out what created it. And then we can start there and say, well, okay, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be that person anymore. I don't want to go down that path anymore. So we'll make our change right here because a lot of these things that go on in our lives aren't in our conscious mind. They come from our subconscious stuff that we we've been, when we were really young, something happened and we just file it back there and that keeps making uh, this coloring our decisions. And, you know, so we have to get back in there and make those, those changes for ourselves. We have to pay attention. It's why journaling is so works so well, because especially when we first wake up in the morning, because our conscious brain is not working as our subconscious talking to us, that'll help us clear up a lot of things. Yeah. And get a good handle on what's going on in our life. And it's, um, and one of the things that I always think that is really interesting, because as you were talking about that, the very first thing that popped my, in my mind is when the very first time that I was told that everything has that cellular memory. So everything is in your cells. And so, um, so when we were talking about like the different, so like using different energy healing and things like that, it's like, oh, well, I've got something going on um, in my um, something's going on with my liver or something's going on with uh, with my heart or whatever and if you actually pay attention to what are some of the things that are actually stored there so and the reason I said liver is because you were talking about anger yeah. and so anger is stored in our liver and so any thing that happened to us that made us angry angry gets stored into the, our liver and that is one of the things that and then um that's how things actually get processed and things like that so when you can actually start to let go of things and so irene says i agree our belief systems <laughs> yeah. right so yes it, in, in anger <clears throat> when we have those moments of anger and we have all those other things that come into our life that kind of get us off balance one of the there's a couple little things you can you can do i always tell people go dig a hole in the garden and talk all of that stuff out of your system into that hole cover it up the earth mother will make a beautiful flower bed will make a beautiful garden she'll change that to something of beauty that's what she does go to a river as it flows away from you talk it into the river let it flow away from you and take it away just purify your body that way. The earth will cleanse that and change that to really good energy. That's what she does. That's one of the greatest things we can do. We have all these tools <clears throat> our ancients knew how to use that we're just trying to find our way back. We've polluted ourselves with every electronic device in the world and that clouds our psyche from really being in touch with what's important in our, with us. We were just talking about it be before we came on is that I don't use a microwave. I don't have Wi-Fi. I don't, I actually at one point was wearing a Fitbit for three months and I, I, I use a, a young lady in the Halebury area to do live blood culture to find out what my blood's doing. I do regular work with her and the difference over three days from wearing that Fitbit for not wearing it was incredible to me. And it just reinforced everything I already knew, but I was just trying to get a, a, a timeline of what was going on when I was sleeping. That's why I wore it. And it was enlightening to me because it showed I was up five or six times through the night. I wasn't wide awake walking around, but I was, my brain was active. So, and that's when it showed me. So that was a, a good use for it for three months and now I don't use it any longer when I saw it was doing to me. Man, it's it's pretty amazing really if you if you have an opportunity that know if you know somebody and does life testing of your blood and you can see your cells at that level and the little changes you make, what it does inside of you, you'll just go away shaking your head. So but it's a good way to monitor what's going on in your body and what's going on in your life because they're tied together.
Yep. And so Irene says, I love the whole, the river, the wind, using the elements to heal. I love it. And she also asks, what about community? So that's her question. Community, how you use community, how you fit into community. Communities can be really, really beneficial to you in a lot of ways because it can help you have structure, but it also can help you find out what bothers you and what doesn't bother you. Because once you're in a community and you're a part of that community, there's a lot of dynamics that goes on in there. And it really helps you understand those little things that trigger our responses in ourselves that we don't particularly like. And community will do that for us. But it will also help us. In a true community, it will also help. We don't have very much community anymore. There's very, very uh, small places that have community. We have too many uh, outside influences, TVs, uh, internet, like we're doing today, <laughs> all of these things where we're constantly bombed with it. So that really distorts true community. So in true community, we, we don't have very much of, uh, outside influence really and that if you can find that you be um your life will be changed dramatically i don't have wi-fi i don't have i have a cell phone only because my kids wanted me to have one so they could keep track of me <laughs> <laughs> but i don't you know i don't i don't have a microwave i don't believe in electric cars i don't uh, I, there's a lot of things that i think if you have them in your house fine but limit your exposure there's a reason when we go into restaurants there's a sign on the door that says microwaves and for pregnant women microwaves are in use there's a reason they're not healthy for us so that's a whole other topic to me <laughs> <laughs> so um irene also says that's why i love drumming and so yes. yeah drumming is a good way to get in touch with the earth mother actually really when you're drumming and you're beating on that drum that's the heartbeat of the earth mother talking to you pay attention you know we 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 talked about this is that when you get into nature and everybody says it's so quiet well if you've really been in nature and you're sitting quietly you'll find out it's not very quiet because there's a lot of noise out there but if you take time and you're beating your drum and if you're doing it on your own and you take the next instant and go hug a tree, what you've been beating, you'll feel flow up through that tree. You'll feel her heartbeat flowing through those trees. It's an absolutely spectacular thing to have happen once you're in that space because everything sacred is there. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a part of you because it flows through you. And there's a, when you were talking about like that, even sitting in the quiet in the, in nature, like it's not quiet, there's lots of noise. And so <clears throat> I had a, um, I had a, uh, a teacher, a drumming teacher that actually shared a video where the entire video was about just sounds. So like it was the sounds of the people working in the community. So like the way that they were hammering things or as they were like trying to get things uh, um, put on or the kids kind of shuffling things along the, the yard and whatever it was, like there was all these different sounds that were going on and each time created that, um, it created a rhythm. Mm -hmm. And so, and that is how they did the video was like based on all these sounds that were actually going on in the community is like it was all rhythm and it all created that rhythm and because we are rhythm we are movement and that's one of the reasons why drumming or using any other kind of instruments gives that vibration that allows you to be able to have that connection and so yeah. um and irene said thank you hey tracy yeah so drumming is yeah drumming's uh it, it's a very good way to get close to the sacred aspect of your being because it'll take you to a place that you don't always go and, and drumming is a tool that'll get you there another tool is a native flute the native flute will get you there too if you sit and listen to it it'll really get you there in a hurry but one of the things that i found that did it for me easier than anything i ever, I, I know of is when in the spring when the frogs first start to come out and you go sit by a pond full of frogs and listen to them singing their song. 
you'll be gone in a deepest meditation you ever had yeah. in a heartbeat. It just will just take you away. It'll take you away. So nature can do all of those things for us if we give her an opportunity to play her song for us. And we're in a spot where we'll actually listen to it. We'll take those earbuds out of our head, shut off our Walkman or whatever we're carrying today and pay attention to what's going on out there. Put mm -hmm. down our phone for, for five minutes. And just being able to be in that silence. Mm -hmm. And so um, my dad laughed at me when I went to uh, to Mattawa the last time because where I go to offer my um, my retreats um, in Mattawa is, is completely off the grid. So like it's solar powered, there's no um, electricity, you can't connect to internet, nothing while you're there. And so I was going to do a one day workshop as opposed to doing a whole weekend and so then my dad was like well what are you going to do there by yourself like you're going to be there two nights by yourself because i went in on the friday and then the workshop was the saturday so i stayed overnight again on the sundays i mean the saturday so that i didn't have to rush back after after the workshop and i said he's like nobody else is going with you and i'm like no i'm just going to be there and he's like but what are you going to do nothing that's the point, right? <laughs> so it's just being able to just sit with nature. And at that point, that was actually spring and that was uh, yeah, the frogs, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. I actually uh, recorded the frogs. And so that was what I got to listen to. I actually had the windows open. And so I had the recording out. And so just being able to listen to that sound, those sounds. And because we don't get to listen to those mm -hmm. things, we don't get to hear all these different things that are going on. And mm -hmm. so it's just really important for us to be able to just tap into whatever. And again, it all depends on what works for you, right? So some people it's listening to the birds, some people it's listening to the frogs, other people it's listening to the water stream. And so I had a young girl that um, we had, I was with a family and we were actually going on a walk through, um, we have a place called Pete's Dam and we were actually going through and the girls were probably, I think the oldest one um, was probably five, maybe maybe a little older maybe a little younger but she wasn't very old anyway and so we were walking along the path and mom and i were talking and then she's like hey guys just be quiet for a second so we were quiet and we were listening and she's like the water's talking to us and the way that the water was actually flowing <laughs> it was actually coming up and gurgling and so when we actually stopped to listen so this little kid was able to connect with it um, and teach us how the fact that the water speaks to us, right? So it was just, it was really incredible to be able to hear and see this young girl who was able to connect with that, um, that energy at such a young age. And we all have it, right? So we all have it. We just need to figure out which one of those works for us and how it's going to work for us, but being able to be still. Um, being able to be still and being quiet. And so um, jokingly, actually, no, it wasn't really a joke. It was actually serious the last time that Chuck and I were together and he was talking about how he does everything and everything's just quiet. And I'm like, Miss talk a lot, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, but when I'm sitting in nature, I'm able to quiet my mind so that I'm not actually talking. But how I process things <laughs> is by talking. And um, because I am auditory and feeling, so I actually have both. And so the auditory, me talking, allows me to be able to process things and hear what it is that is going on in terms of my thoughts. Um, and that's, but it's that being able to figure out what works for you, right? So how quiet do you need to be? And being able to just be okay with just being um, quiet. And so um, Irene says, Pete's Dam is my favorite place in Temiskaming Shores. It's the place that I go to every spring, every, and then continue through the rest of the, the summer. And even when my kids were little, like I love Pete's Dam. That's just been our go-to from the time that I've been, um, since we moved here place. when I was 10. So they, we have some really other really nice places as well, but that's, um, that's definitely one of my favorites too, Irene. So is there anything else that you wanted to share before we well, sign off? Well, one of the things I encourage uh, people to do is try to disconnect your life from everything else you got going on. And this is really hard today because we're bombed with more and more electronic devices, more and more things. It's really hard to get to that spiritual side of our, our uh, divine being when we have every electronic device known to man in our home, beeping at us, showing us pictures, just all of this stuff. It's, I always try to encourage people to disconnect 
for 10 minutes a day. Start with 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Shut off your cell phone, shut off your computer, click off your Wi-Fi. You should never have your Wi-Fi running at night in your house because it just fills you up with all sorts of stuff you don't want. And it, 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 all, all, all this electronic stuff is just invading our bodies and creating all sorts of havoc with, our, with us. So it's really, I encourage you to try to do that. And then just in those 10 minutes every day, you'll just find yourself getting closer and closer to the divine. And it'll, you'll be able to recognize it more. It's hard to recognize it when you got everything going, your phone going, your, you know, our phones are got every piece of information in the world in our palm of our hands. So it's really hard for us to disconnect from that and just connect with ourselves. And we have to put ourselves first, not our phones. It's really, it's one of the, th the toughest things to do. So for some reason, we're talking about connection and internet. We connection. lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I can't see um, Irene's comments. So she said, so glad Chuck Forgette was on. So refreshing to hear um, men share openly. Disconnecting is so important. Thank you for reminding me. You're welcome. So, I think it's one of the hardest things because we're surrounded by it everywhere. It's everywhere in our lives. It's yeah. invasive in it. And it, we need to go back the other way. You know, uh, when we're in that, and I, I really like what Rolly teaches and how she goes about teaching because it, it empowers. I'm really big on wanting women to be empowered in a good way because they had a lot of things to share in their, in their life and their life's path through the native tradition. And we've got away from all of that. You know, uh, it's really interesting. The U.S. government is founded on the Iroquois Confederacy. And the Iroquois Confederacy was a, the brainchild of the Onondaga Nation, who were the peacekeepers. And I'm a, an, an Onondaga native. And so it, when they, when the, uh, the Brits came over and took that design, the one thing they left out of it was women. And you know what all that Susan B. Anthony and that whole connection there to try to get it back. And we still, women in the last 30 or 40 years wanted to be more like men and women. So they've lost their connection also. So their connection to the divine is very, very important. It runs, they're the only, people on the planet who have a, almost a week connected from the earth mother to the great spirit. And it only happens to women and it happens once a month. The honor, honor, that time is the most sacred time in your life. And we call it anything but sacred. <laughs> we call it everything else but sacred. It's the most sacred time you have. Use that power well. I encourage you. And it's, uh, and it is, and it's really important that we actually are able to connect. And so one of the things that um, I just had a, um, a young girl who's, uh, whose grandmother um, shared that her um, granddaughter had just started her, um, her moon time and it was like, celebrate it, celebrate that experience celebrate because we didn't, right? So when I started, when I was 10, it was like, oh my God, I don't want anybody to know. It has to be like great, this great big, huge secret. Now it's like, and, and I wish that I would have known then that I know now is that it needed to be um, celebrated. It needed to be honored and because that is a huge connection. And so, um, so I'm grateful that I can actually teach that now. I didn't have any girls. Um, I had two boys, so I didn't get to teach them that, <laughs> but they know that it's very natural and it's, um, but because it was very open in our house. And so the boys were very much. And so when they have children, if they have children, cause they've told me that they're not having children, but if they have children then, and they have a daughter, then we're going to be able to, um, to teach them some of those things. And so, um, and I get to be part of that, um, with them and help them with that, that learning. So. 
So miigwech and thank you everybody for joining and thank you for the discussions. I love it when people are on live and can join in the discussions. Mm -hmm. If you guys have any other questions or if there's anything else that you guys want to be able to know, then just comment below. And um, so Ch Chuck does check messages and stuff. So he will be able to see some of the messages that are coming through. And so if you have any more questions for him and one of the things that um, we did chat very briefly about before jumping on is that we're going to be working on um, setting up some times locally where Chuck's going to be able to come in and do um, some different teachings. What that's going to look like exactly, we're not really sure. We're still figuring that out. But with the new building, um, then we're definitely going to be able to do something so that we can actually have those connections. And um, we were honored to have Chuck join us at one of our circles last month. No. Yes. Yes, it was last month because this month we couldn't have a fire because there was a fire ban on. <laughs> and so, but um, but Chuck was able to come and share his knowledge. And um, so really thankful for him to have been able to do that and looking forward to, to learning more um, from him and uh, over the years. So thank you. Thank, you, thank you, you for, for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you, one and all who joined us. Appreciate it. So bye everyone. And I will talk to you guys. Um, actually, I won't talk to you guys next week because we have our retreat, our week long retreat at, um, old, at the old mission resort. And so I'm not coming on next week. It'll be the week after. So I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.